everybody, it's Brandon Lee with Yip Yip, and welcome back to Celebrate the Wins. And I am here with my new friend, and I'm going to say it correctly, Dave Custon. Very good. I got it. <laughs> yeah. That is a starting point. And Dave is a <coughs> founder of Content Bacon, which I just, I love your name. Thank you. And, uh, you've had this, uh, your company since 2013. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk today about celebrating your wins. We're going to talk a little bit about social media. We're going to talk about content marketing. Dave, welcome to Celebrate the Wins. Thank you, Brandon. Happy to be here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So it's a Friday afternoon. Dave and I are pretty fired up. We've already been talking, diving into this. And I'm really excited about today because uh, we do our five questions in 18 minutes or less. And I'm telling you, I think we're going to go a little different route today because as we've been talking and prepping for this, uh, I've really loved what we've been talking about, especially in, in light of a lot of other conversations I have. So Dave, let's, let's jump into question number one, though, because I, I, I want to hear your response to this as well, is going back 10 years. And, you know, sometimes I say back to the year 2000 and it, it weren't in sales in 2000. So going back 10 years, yeah. I think sales are... Harder or easier now than they were then? Um, so, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking about my answer again now as, as you're asking me that. I, I don't know that sales itself is harder or easier. I think sales, uh, if, I had a, if I had a guess, I, I think it's easier actually. Um, perhaps the methods to connect with people, you know, that has changed. That may have, may have gotten harder, may have gotten easier. I think, I think it's easier for people to not accept communication from people because you could see where it's coming from. You could, you know, it's, you, you have caller ID on your phone, you see the emails, who it's coming from. So I, I think that has your ability to screen and shut people out has become easier, which I guess to the other, to the person on the other end makes it harder. Um, but conversely, I think it also makes it easier to connect with those who want to be connected with, um, you know, that they're, they're open to having conversations. So, you know, it sounds like I'm, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but, I think if you're in sales and you're dedicated to creating conversations and opportunities with people, that's just the job. You got to do that day in and day out and you're going to find people to connect with. That, that being said, I think, you know, we were talking about it, about it before in the environment we're in now around self-serve information consumption. Um, that's a pro and a con too. Uh, if you're a company that is putting out content, that people can then consume on their own when they want to, you have a, dis a distinct advantage over companies in your space that aren't doing that. Yeah. So, well, and I would say too, and, and, and I've had these conversations and, and I'd love your thought on it. Companies creating so much content in some ways encourages people not to connect with people. What do you uh, yeah. I, I think that's an interesting point. Um, and look, I can make the argument that, 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 they will connect when they're ready to connect. And that's the purpose of content. That is, that is the, the, the sales lubrication, if you will. That is what helps someone become sales ready so that when they do have a conversation with, with the salesperson, um, we're not talking about features and benefits. We're talking about how to get you onboarded. And, you know, it's like they've self-selected themselves. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point. I think, I think that is also a way to dequalify people. You know, don't waste my time as a salesperson here's my content, read it. If we're not a good fit for you, then, you know, you move on. There's so much there that uh, I'm not wearing my yip yip hat right now. I'm wearing <laughs> to celebrate the win. So we're going to kind of keep moving and keep okay. it valuable for everybody else. But I, I do, I mean, at some point I'd love to keep learning with you or and from you on that because, you know, the buyer's journey is something that gets a lot of press, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about buyer's journey and there's lead scores and there's, when is it nurtured? When does it kick out as a fully nurtured lead at the bottom of the funnel and kick out to a salesperson? And as we talk buyer's journey, buyer's journey, buyer's journey, when do we bring in the sales rep in that? And the salesman yeah. in me, sorry, the salesman mm -hmm. in me says, get me relationships as fast as you can and let me nurture them and assess them and give them what they need. And now we've got this, this concept of content's going to do that for us. And there's, yeah. there's, there's a rub there. What do you think the, of that? The, the rub being what? That you take the human, you take the human out of it? Yeah. And, and when do you bring the human in and yeah. how does that influence the buyer's journey? So, uh, you know, I think maybe starting at the end there, I think, I think the, the art of it is to make your content be as human as possible. So many organizations, they write, you know, they, they, they write differently than someone may actually speak. Um, 
blogs read that way, emails read that way, social media messages read that way, and and people can pick up on on that right away. So um, I'm in favor of automation. I think given the kind of business I'm building, which is a, a large scaling business with hundreds of customers and then thousands of customers, the only way to do that, I think, effectively is with some automation, some level of automation. The conversations that we have with our customers around let me, the sales guy, do it versus the automation do it is when it's at the very bottom of the funnel. So I believe that hot leads, you have the guy or the girl, they nurture it. But to get them to that point, I don't, I don't have any issues with using content to do that. Yeah. And I, I don't either. I think the question for me is still open. And, and content marketing, the inbound funnel, has become a disruptor to sales, to marketing. And as yeah. a member of the Sales Enablement Society, I mean, it's one of the things that we talk about is you got sales, you got marketing, and, and yeah. who's doing the marriage counseling between these <laughs> two? And how do you help businesses be more yeah. efficient and better at what they're doing? And I think for me, in, in my 20 some years of creating you know, personalized systems for sales and entrepreneurs is mm -hmm. when do you add the human to human and when do you let content? And that, I mean, in some ways that's the million dollar question, right? With, if you leave it too long without the human, do yeah. you lose the, the potential buyer? If you bring them in too soon, do you scare them off? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's jump into this because we okay. are still on Celebrate the Win. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the win that you want to celebrate with us today? So, um, I mean, geez, there's so many uh, wins that, that, that we're experiencing, um, you know, just randomly. <laughs> I love it. Wait, wait, I just, just the casual, there's just so many <laughs> that we could talk about today. No, what I mean, <laughs> it, really what I, and that comes from gratitude. It really, it's like there's so many good things Yes. Uh, when you think about what, what you have going on in your, in your life or, or you're talking about me now, my life, there's so many good things. And we re recently created a relationship with a company down here. They're in the um, original content uh, production business. They've been around about 25 years. They create content for, for broadcast, but use, you know, fortune 500 brands as um, uh, fe featured partners, if you will, in that, in that broadcast or that content. <clears throat> so they have a really narrow lane and they're only able to deliver their, their services through that lane. And by bolting us onto their business, uh, we really expand that lane both for them and for their customers. And, you know, it just seems like a really great opportunity where you know three conversations into the relationship and you know I'm, I'm really excited about it. it could have a giant impact on our business as well as theirs yeah so tell me about you've shared this with me already and share this for everybody is how did you get that conversation started uh yeah how'd you get started first and then i'll follow up so um uh, I, I reached out to their VP of marketing on linkedin just sent her a, a you know a, a message um i used the my company name as a as an icebreaker content bacon i mean people have such a great response to it um she, her response people hungry gets them to respond well, to her response back was you had me at bacon <laughs> how often do you hear that a lot yes, a lot good so it's a really great icebreaker um and i said hey this is what we're doing this is what we're up to i would love to learn about what you're up to maybe there's uh, some synergies how about an offline conversation and it, it happened like instantaneously I can't believe you emailed me. We're looking for a company like yours. So, I mean, timing obviously plays, plays a part, but. Serendipity um, is a beautiful thing. So tell us, tell us what you're doing. I know, I mean, maybe this is part of your secret sauce and what's working, but you know, this is designed to help the community yeah. learn together. Uh, you had said when we were talking earlier that, that messages, and correct me if I, if I remembered it wrong, but messages towards somebody that's a potential client it's still hard to get through the noise and, and they get a lot of those, yeah. but the other type of messages and I'll let you explain it. You're finding great success with. So the, the, the messages to the potential JVs or, and partners, those are the reception's great. One step back, my way of being my company's uh, way of being is really the same way of being as content marketing, which is to be helpful, right? Is to be educational, to inform, um, to help people understand what it is that you advocate for in a non-promotional way. And so we do that on behalf of our customers and we do it for ourselves and I do it as an individual. And so I think when I send that kind of message to a potential JV, just like I did with you, it lands on you in a, in a really um, uh, non-threatening way. Right. And it, it's really, it's no BS. I mean, that's, it's not, it's not trickery to get you to get on the phone with me and then I say, Hey, I got stuff to sell you. It's, 
genuine. And I think it lands on the JV targets differently than a VP of marketing or, a, or an owner of, of a company. I don't know why, because I really mean it. I, I really do say in those messages, hey, I want to just talk about what you're up to, what we're up to. Maybe there's a fit. And I'll give you as much of my expertise and secret sauce as you want. And if you do, take, take it. Right. That's what content marketing is. Yeah. Put it all out there. So what do you, what do you think is uh, the reason why some people, when you approach them, like the VP mm -hmm. of marketing or something, they're not receptive? Like what, what's your yeah. perception as to why? I, I, think it's a, I think it's a knee jerk reaction to not wanting to be sold to. And I think on LinkedIn, there's a ton of that going on. I know that I get it all the time. I, if I, ex I accept someone's request to connect, and a day or two later, I get a sales message from them. Right. What do you do then? I'm curious because. So on occasion, if I'm, if I'm feeling a little, um, if I'm feeling a little. Uh, um, feisty might be the feisty word. Feisty might yeah. be the word. I might point that out to them. I might say, hey, thanks so much for connecting. And I'm paraphrasing here. Um, I'll, I'll actually send, Brandon, I'll send you the email that I've sent to others. Um, but I'll say to them, listen, can, what can you just did is. In here? Can we bring it in and show everybody? Um, I probably could. <laughs> or is it, is it not for public concern? No, no, it's, there's nothing, there's no pejorative language in it whatsoever. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll black out a few things. I'd have to, I'd have to look for it. Give me a second. Okay. Um, but what I say to them is, um, what you just did is like the annoying person at a networking function where they just stick their card in your face and say, Hey, I'm Joe. Yes. You took no time to get to know me. You took no time to understand who I am as a person, what my problems are and how you may be of service to me. Yep. And I'm, who wants that? No one wants that. Right. So I think that happens a lot on LinkedIn. And I think maybe that's, you know, people are guarded against that. It's yeah. my theory. Anyway. And I think, I mean, it happens a lot on LinkedIn. As you said, it happens a lot in networking events. It happens a lot when, yeah somebody has gone through uh, however long or deep into a content funnel and then the salesperson gets there. It's like, I've been reading this stuff and then the person gets on the phone and it's all about the sale. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, have yeah. an example uh, that happened to me yesterday, uh, maybe the day before, but um, I won't say the name because it's a name that in our industry, everybody would know. Okay. <laughs> and it was a message about like, Hey, you used to use us, We've got this deal that we're working on where we, we actually, if you come back, we want to coach you. We want to help you. We want to use, we want to help you use our, our tool better. And mm -hmm. we want to come alongside you. And, and it, it sounded like this real genuine, like we want to help you use this better. And it's, it's actually not a tool that we would use anymore, but I was kind of intrigued from the marketing perspective. I'm like, this is really interesting. I wonder where this is going to go. And so I opted in. And then I got an email from a person that said, hey, here's a few times that I have available today, tomorrow, choose one and let's talk. Okay. All good. Get on the phone. Hardcore Hard sales. Pitch. Hardcore, like we only have so many spots. There's so yeah. many other people in, my, in this room with me. We're all making the same phone calls. You've got to get your spot now. Here's a price. And it was just this complete turn off in the relationship yeah. gut, right it's like yeah. you had me feeling good you had me thinking that there was a partnership thing going on here and the reality was you were just trying to you know back back door a, a close yeah right well let me ask let me ask you this and i mean this in, as a sincere question um when i started in sales 25 years ago ish uh, you know it was big for us to have tickets to the sporting events yes. to do yes. happy hours to do all that. And it was part of the game, if you will. And everyone knew it was the game, but it was all about building relationships. Yeah. So how would that, how do you look at that lunch different than that or the same as that? Or what's your take? Yeah. Good, good question. And I, I think that it's all about the timing of it. So I think giving gifts, if you know, gifts and, and doing those nice things for people. And I played in that world too plenty of entertaining of customers. Right. Um, I just think it's around when you do it, you know, like if you do it straight away, it just, it feels disingenuous. It feels like, you know, give to get versus give because that's who you are. Um, so I think it's all about the timing of it. So we've totally gotten off, not totally gotten off. What I like about this is, is we, we always talk about the win and we talked about your win with LinkedIn, but then, I mean, we, 
I think this is good talking about some of the failures mm -hmm. that we've seen that have, that have been you know, coming to us and why we think they're so annoying. And, and gosh, you know, maybe there's some people out here listening going, gosh, we did that. Maybe we need to rethink what we did. Yeah. So what are some areas, what are some of your learning areas right now? Um, LinkedIn focused on the JVs, the partnerships, the mm -hmm. messaging that you're using. Um, I, you know, I love telling people, gosh, this is what I see what you're doing. This is what we're doing. Is there, if you think there's something worth exploring there, let's try and get on a call. And, and that seems to work pretty well for me. Yeah. What, what are areas that you think um, you're learning that maybe you can improve on? Yeah, that's a, that's also a, a good question. And, and it's, you know, again, as a way of being, that's how we are in this organization. Um, I think, you know, I think for me and my role with my company, um, we just let our third salesperson go. Um, so we, we have, and, and I don't know, this is, this is a, uh, a monumental learning or, or anything that other companies don't deal with, but, you know, finding the right sales talent is, is I'm finding to be very difficult. Yeah. Um, I think what I've learned, you know, I thought, you, you, you know, you hire for attitude and you hire, hire for that kind of, you know, attitude first, skills second, you could teach the skills. Um, and I think we've done that to a degree, but I think what I'm now learning is while we're in this, what sounds like this automated industry yeah. in sales, it's not at all. In my, on my side, it's not at all automated with respect to the conversation, the actual conversation where there's salesmanship required and there's listening required that you can give that to someone. I, you know, we've given access to people, given that access to some people, but <clears throat> there's some natural talent you got to have in the listening. And <clears throat> I think that combined with some experience in digital marketing and, and even advertising or even entrepreneurship in general around how businesses run, how businesses make money. We haven't had that in, in a salesperson. And I, and my theory right now is that that has been the deficit being yeah. able to speak to a, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our customers are business are the, is the business owner, you know, right. entrepreneur led run companies. And you, know, you have to really understand what, what they're going through and what they're dealing with. And if you haven't, you don't have that in your background, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to ha have that salesmanship with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have a, um, I have a guest coming on celebrate the wins that I was actually talking with yesterday is, is kind of our pre conversation and he's a sales manager in an organization. And right before we got on the call, he had an interview uh, with a potential sales rep. So we started talking a little bit about what is, what's the process? What do you do? And I brought up that um, I was fortunate years ago to be able to spend a long weekend studying with Brian Tracy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the younger folks have no idea who Brian is. For me, you know, one of my first tapes on having a positive mindset in mm -hmm. college yeah. uh, was Brian Tracy. And I listened to that thing for, you know, forever until the tape wore out, basically. So um, I've read a lot of his books over the years, and he's just had a big influence on me. And one of the things that I've, I've remembered that he said is sales is a skill that can be learned. And the difference between the top sales reps and all the others is just a little bit of skill. Just, just putting it. So yeah. one of the questions I ask in the first, que not one of the questions, the first question I ask in every interview with the sales rep is, what are you reading or who are you studying right now to refine your craft as a salesperson? Mm -hmm. And if they don't have a good answer, that's the last and only question I ask <laughs> in the interview process. What are, you, what are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? Yeah. So I have, um, I have two books I'm reading right now. Yeah. And um, one of them is called The uh, Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, one of, my, one of my daughters gave it to me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually in, enjoying that right now. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm also rereading um, uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. It's, mm -hmm. it's something, it's a book that I read every couple of years and just mm -hmm. deep dive back into it. Cool. Thank you. So, hey, Dave, thank you so much thank for you. today. We have... Uh, we didn't quite get through all five questions. That's okay. I really think we had a great conversation. I, I do too. Think that others listening in, I mean, these are, these are great conversations for people to start working on. There's such a, 
there's such a disruption in the way business is being done. And in my opinion is that this whole digital revolution is getting disruptive again before it ever really got mature. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of chaos going on right now and people trying to figure out like, what do we do next? Yeah. So I, I appreciate the conversation that we had. And now I do always have a surprise question at the okay. end. <laughs> and yeah, and everyone does that too. They kind of back up and go. I'm ready. I'm you, ready. You can see the, the, the oh crap bubble over there. No, no, not at all. I'm ready. No, and, and you know, they're, they're meant to be fun and they're usually pretty easy. But uh, so tell us, some of the funniest or the most unique or the most fun content that your company has created for a client. What, what's okay. some yeah. So um, we, 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 they're no longer a customer, but they were, they were a, a customer of ours and they were in the um, office products space. So uh, mail order, large multi multi million dollar company, 25 plus million annual revenue, but selling commodities, selling toilet paper and paper clips and pens and pencils their number one product that they sold was toilet paper. And so much like Costco. I was saying um, it wasn't Costco. No, no. Um, and so they, they, they wanted to start creating their own content, but uh, you know, at our, at our recommendation to do so with a lot of personality, you're selling paper clips and toilet paper. And so the, the, the email that we created for them, so we wrote content, put it on their blog, and when we started to share it with their customers, you know, tens of thousands of customers, the email template that we created was called Tales from the Crapper. And, you know, it, the, 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 the image in the, in, the, um, in the header of the email was a, was a mummy wrapped in toilet paper. And while we shared their blog content, we also created some fictional content for them, which, <laughs> you know, it was fun. And yeah. it, 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 was, it got a lot of good reactions. Very cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, Dave, uh, the last thing you get is plug away. I appreciate you being a guest. I want My to give you the opportunity to plug away. Tell us about content baking a little bit and, and how people could connect with you if they want. Okay, to great. I appreciate that. With you. So content baking, we're a, um, uh, an inbound marketing or a content marketing service. We help companies fuel easily. The, the key there is easily fuel their, their inbound marketing strategies. Um, we help customers through the, the entire marketing uh, journey, your inbound marketing journey. We have a team of professional writers, a team of professional editors. But, but I guess what I want to leave most people with is that we're, we're tremendous advocates for inbound marketing, content marketing. And if any, anybody wants to have a conversation about it, they need any help, they're stuck, they need a, a, a push to move forward, reach out to me. I'm happy to provide that. Um, and, and you can do so at uh, Dave at contentbacon.com. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn you know, reach out. And I'm, and as I said before, our whole way of being is to be helpful. And uh, whether you do business with us or with someone else, I don't really care. We're advocates for, for what it is that we do. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, do you guys have bacon cooking every day in the office? We don't, we don't. But when we, when we, when we bring on a new customer, we do send them cupcakes with bacon on it. Very cool. Good stuff. Well, yeah. gosh, I should, I might, I might have to hire you to write an email or front something for okay. me just for the cupcake, but you got it. Hey, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Dave Custon with Content Baker. Thank you so much. For Thank you, Brandon. Time.